So hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you uh, my victory against uh, Bono Marielf at the European Club Cup 2019. Um, I was playing black. So I see there is a message in, in the chat already. So I may not be able to follow the chat all the time, but I'll try to have a look from time to time. Um, so. So Ponomaryov, who has been FIDE world champion, um, whose rating is uh, close to 2700. So I was playing black. It was a difficult game. I was awaiting a tough fight, and it was a tough fight. So why does I'm trying to play moves, but it's wait. Okay, now it started. So I decided to play a classical Sicilian. So with four knights and a pawn on d6, um, not a knight or with a6. Um, I decided to go for uh, for this Sicilian. I have a, I have played quite a few. I have played quite a few Sicilians in my life. I mean the knight of as well, the dragon. Um, the Zvezhnikov, Kalashnikov, I've played many. And uh, in the, for that game, I decided to play the classical Sicilian. And yes, after, as you're saying in the chat, after Bishop G5, this is a rich arouser. Um, I played E6, and here my opponent surprised me with Queen D3, which is highly unusual, at least used to be highly unusual in this position. Um, Queen D2 is a move that everyone uh, place basically um the, the queen on this tree looks uh, a little bit uh, awkward but actually it's a very interesting move and it's very trendy now in the sicilian also against the diamond elf and even sometimes against the knight um to put the queen to move the queen to the third uh, rank in order to get it to g3 in many variations so, for example, queen f3, I mean, bishop e3 and queen f3 has became one of the main line in, in the time and off. So the time and off is uh, this one. And here, of course, everybody was, or knight f6, for everybody was uh, playing f3 before. And then recently, queen f3 became a very popular move popular move with the same idea of casting alongside and white wants to play queen g3 and play a favorable and ending uh with the h file open and a possibility to put pressure on uh, on the king side uh, so the topic as you're asking in the chat is just i'm just showing uh one of my best victories uh this is uh the subject the the topic that was uh, decided for today so as a, as i've been saying for people who were not here at the start i'm playing black against the ponomaryov that game was played um, about two and a half years ago anyway so that was just to show that uh, the queen to the third rock is something that became very popular in the sicilian but uh, by then, I had never seen it, seen it in the in the router, uh, and it actually it's actually a very a very interesting line. White wants to castle alongside, and usually is gonna take take on c six and play queen g three. At least this is what he's gonna do. For example, if you play a six, trying to go into the Kozul variation with bishop d seven, b five. Um, some players here castle, but some even just take on d5 right away and play long castle and then move the queen to g3. And you can play d5, you have a very strong center, but it's very unstable actually. Uh, it's true that it is, it's a solid center, but you can't really push anything. Um, if you push your c pawn or your uh, e pawn, then you, your d5 pawn will be weak. Um, d4 uh, will be a strategical mistake 
and white will uh, start putting pressure on the on the on the queen on the king side this, this is actually a pretty dangerous position anyway when my opponent played queen d3 he had no idea how to react um the the rouser is one of the the sicilians i've played the most often in my in my life so i know quite a few variations against queen d2 um most of them started starting with a6 um for example queen d2 a6 then knight takes d4 and b5 or bishop d7 and b5 or knight takes d4 and bishop e7 i mean there are there are so many there are many lines and uh so i will answer my, one more time because in the chat someone is again asking the topic i'm just showing uh one of my best uh, victories uh today so against Pono Mariov with the black pieces so i was during the game i uh, of course i couldn't uh don't don't worry austin uh it's uh it's uh it's fine uh so uh when my opponent when my opponent played queen d3 i actually and uh, I, I was I was thinking what should be the smartest way to react, and I decided to go for Queen B6, which is one of the lines I play against Queen D2. I thought this is a clever way to take advantage of Queen D3 because after Knight B3 A6. Now, if Y decides to castle alongside, the pawn on F2 will be hanging. So I thought. I did not see any other way to take advantage of queen d3 because you don't really want to play knight e5. Uh, at first, it may seem like the queen on d3 can be easily attacked, but it would just move and then f4, and you have to move away, and uh, it doesn't really make sense for black. So I played queen b6, my opponent played knight b3, I played a6, but and now white played queen g3. Defending f2, getting ready to play long castle. So here I have a choice. Uh, I can play bishop e7, bishop d7, queen c7. Different options, but I decided for queen c7 because I wanted to keep the option to develop my bishop on b7. Um, and I thought bishop b7 is not very useful because I, I wanted to take... Uh, in case of bishop takes f6, I wanted to take back with a with a pawn, and then I'm happier with my bishop on f8. So I played queen c7. Now I'm also, I mean, now bishop b7 could be my my next move because if I played bishop b7 immediately, I'm not sure if that would be good for white. But here, uh, this would have to be considered, of course. I mean, a pawn is a pawn. Um, I think that would be compensation, which maybe just bishop e7 or bishop e5 or something. Um, but okay, starting with queen c7, it's clear that I'm threatening to complete my development with bishop e7 and short castle. So my opponent took here on f6 and just played bishop e2. In case of long castle, I would play b5, b4, a5, a4. The pawns would come quickly. So bishop e2. I think is a good move and it may sometimes threaten to put the bishop on h5 and it can be pretty annoying there because sometimes well first of all sometimes black likes to play h5 h4 just to expand on the queen side on the king side and it also puts pressure on f7 so for example if i play bishop d7 then long castle would become impossible uh, nevertheless here I was hesitating, should I play h5 and completely prevent bishop h5? Or should I play b5 and just allow bishop h5 and then play bishop b7 and so on? I decided for h5, which, uh, which is a decent choice. And here my opponent played queen h4. I played bishop g7. Bishop b7 was, was an alternative, but I thought... Bishop g7 is a good move. Um, the only problem is that uh, d6 um, is uh, less protected. But 
if nothing, con if white is unable to manage anything concrete, then my bishop is much better placed on g7 because one day my goal will be to push f5, even at the cost of a pawn sometimes. If I can play b5, bishop b7, castle alongside, then I won't mind playing f5 and just sacrificing a pawn if I can open the long diagonal of my bishop. And I thought, okay, my opponent can play queen g3 back, but then in the worst case, I can repeat moves. And I thought uh, that long castle should be critical after what b5 would be an option. For example, a3 to stop b4, and I may play rook b8 and then try to play b4. Anyway, that would be a pretty unclear position. But instead, my opponent got tempted to uh, take the free pawn on h5, which is actually not really a free pawn. Um, White's next move here, if I do not move anything or if I play something like b5, it's pretty clear. White wants to play queen g3, just unpinning the bishop. And then the bishop would move back. And, well, I would still have a bishop pair. It would still be a game, but that would be an extra pound for white. Knight b4, white would just castle alongside. That would not do much. I mean, even castle short side. I'm not so sure I want my knight on c2 with rook c1 coming and problems along the c5. Um, but here there is a very strong move for black, which has just been suggested in the chat, which is the one I played in the game, King F8. And King F8 is extremely annoying for white. Now the bishop on G7 is protected. So if white wants to get rid of the pin, uh, it will have to play either to play G4, which is extremely ugly, because then the bishop is trapped on h5, but also then my knight may jump here and there, and uh, the white queen on h4 is also out of play. Um, and I mean, my counter, my counter play is coming very quickly, and white could very soon be in, a, in, huge, in huge trouble. So g4 is not something you want to play, even if... Well, that's the only way to make sure you will never ever lose the h5 bishop, but it's a very ugly move. And otherwise, white needs to play queen g4, but of course, it's a lot of time. You need to first remove the queen somewhere on the diagonal and then the bishop. And it's, I mean, while queen g3 was very harmonious, just queen g3, bishop b2, and so on, queen g4 is not harmonious at all. So it actually might have been the best move objectively, but I think after knight e5 followed by knight e4 putting pressure on b2, I mean, I think black is already almost clearly better. Sorry, trying to follow the chat at the same time. So here as knight e5 is definitely a problem for white, my opponent played f4, and now my goal should be to break the center, to activate my pieces, and take advantage of this uh, paralyzed, I mean, this paralyzed pieces along the h file. Um, as well, this is quite ugly for white, but it is temporary. I mean, now that knight e5 has been prevent prevented, uh, next could be g4 or, or queen g4. And if I cannot go knight e5, then it will be difficult to create uh, concrete, concrete problems. f5 right away has, uh, has been, pro or d5, or as, it be as it's been uh, just uh, suggested in the chat, um, why should just take it? ef5 or ed5 and it would be difficult to find something concrete so here i actually play the move that uh, reinforces uh, the threat of playing d5 or f5 and also has a concrete threat can you guess the move someone in the chat 
Yes, correct, Austin. 97. 97 is a very good move because it has a tactical strategy, which is to just go knight g6 and take the pawn here and then get the bishop pair back. And with equal material and such a strong center, uh, a very nice square on e5, then my position would just be great. Um, and the positional strategy is to play f5. Now my, my knight is protecting it, protecting it. The bishop gets, the diagonal gets open. b5, b4 is coming. And um, this could quickly turn to a nightmare for white. My opponent played queen h3. So he doesn't want to play g4, which is, as I said, an ugly move because then the bishop can never... Uh, move back from h5, it can never go backwards, so then I would play b5, probably. f5, you may consider, but uh, I'm very happy with my center. I would like to keep my pawn on e6, you know, so I think I would just play b5 and b4, bishop b7, and it's unclear where, I mean, my king is extremely safe on f8, and it's quite unclear where the, the white king is going to be safe. Short castle after uh, playing g4 is not really something one wants to do. And okay, I'm threatening to push b4, a5, and I have very easy play. And my opponent has very difficult moves to play. And the bishop on h5 is like uh, not existing. And f5, of course, is always in the air. Uh, but I don't have any reason to do it right away. Anyway, my opponent did not like uh, g4. Queen g4 would be bad because I would just play f5 with tempo and that would uh, be quite terrible as I would straighten bishop takes his three. So he played queen h3 trying to relocate uh, his pieces uh, in a different way. And here I decided for d5. Um, I was less impressed by f5 here. Um, I can't exactly remember why, because f5 looks like a decent move, but perhaps white would just take and then castle. Well, f5 looks very interesting as well here. And, and I also very strongly considered uh, to just play b5, to just play on the queen side. Because white needs a lot of time to relocate his pieces. Uh, there is no harmony in the white position, and I want to play b4, bishop b7, a5, and so on. But okay, I thought with a queen standing temporarily on this diagonal, I should somehow take advantage of it, and I played d5, which here I considered stronger than f5 because after ed5 which was actually the right the correct move i thought queen takes f4 was uh completely crushing i thought well i'm i'm winning this very important f4 pawn i'm straightening queen e5 check uh winning the h5 bishop i'm also straightening to just take back on the 5 i thought this is just a disaster for white but actually, the engine finds queen. Found, I mean, the engine then showed queen g3, which I did not see in the game. Neither did my opponent. Uh, a very strange move, but it solves it solves the, the tactical problems. Um, there is no rock takes h5. There is no queen e5. So I mean, that's the only way not to lose a piece. I'm not saying that white's position is good here. Um, but this is not a win for black, let's say. So actually here, it could be that this would be better. And after knight takes, just pawn takes. Queen f3 and just, just develop my pieces, castle, and take the pawn, something like this. I'm going to end pin and then put my bishop on e4, then play f5, and I have very strong pieces. I have a very good coordination. I think this is just a very good position for black. But this is how white should play. 
And I have zero doubt. Uh, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that my opponent did not take on d5, not because of knight takes d5, but because of queen takes f4. Uh, and it's very likely I would have played queen takes f4 um, because I, I missed this quiz, queen g3. Um, I don't know if I would have seen it. Had my opponent played uh, ed5, would, have, would I have seen queen g3 or not? I don't know. Um, anyway, it's not like queen g3 would be a disaster. I even think that black would still be better after that. But as I, as I said, white would survive. Um, but well, being afraid of queen takes f4, my opponent decided to play short castle to protect the f4 pawn. I think that's the move that 95% uh, of people would play. Uh, just defending the f4 pawn and castling, finally castling. I just took on e4, knight takes e4, what else? I mean, if I can play f5 and keep my pawn on e4, then uh, this is just a disaster for white. So knight takes e4 has to be played, but now white has concrete problems. I played f5. And there is a very, very concrete problem here for white. As next, I want to play knight d5. I'm going to switch the knight takes f4, and I'm also going to, depending where the white knight is going, I'm also going to straighten knight f6. So for my opponent went for knight g5, which is, let's say, the only logical move, because knight g3 is, I mean, is such an ugly move with these pieces there. I mean, I can play knight d5 to attack here. Perhaps queen h4 would be the only move. I mean, okay, first of all, I am, I mean, this would be winning because the queen would have to go back and then knight f4. Um, if the knight goes somewhere, then I have knight f6, maybe knight g3 back. But this is just so ugly for white. I mean, I can also take here. I can take there. I can play knight f6. This is not something anyone wants with white. Yeah, knight g3 is like, I mean, the queen on h3 is completely trapped. I can't take it, but okay, it's like, White is playing three pieces down here. So knight g5 is like the best practical try, but it simply fails tactically because of knight d5, threatening knight f4 and knight f6. So there is no way for white to prevent both, both threats. So my opponent decided to play knight takes f7. And here, what is the best move for black? Can you guys point it out in the chat? Indeed, and this is actually what my opponent missed. He thought that I should take on h5 and take on f7, and that my position would be very good, but uh, nothing more than that. I mean, white could take and solidify the position, and uh, I think this is very pleasant for black, uh, or perhaps p6 just to reduce the possibilities of the b3 knight and then bishop b7 this looks very pleasant for black but okay this is i mean i have two bishops for a rook and two pawns uh but queen takes f7 right away is a much improved version of that since after bishop f7 rook h3 if white just takes on h3 now this is the same position except that the g2 pawn is now on h3 my king has already freed the eighth rank, which means that the rook is going to come very soon to g8. This is just completely lost for white. Here, bishop d7, I guess, perhaps even bishop h6, just to take on f4, as now the pawn cannot be protected. And okay, rook g8 is coming, bishop c6. This is just completely lost for uh, white. So there my opponent decided to, I mean, GH freaking F7 is so easy that he decided to try to uh, complicate the position. He played bishop takes e6. Um, of course, uh, bishop takes e6, I mean, even that is extremely good for me, I think, uh, with rook g8 coming next. But now I just want to collect even more material, so I took on b3. If a b3, bishop b6, now it's three pieces for for the rook, so that so white has to take on d5, and now this is a clear extra piece. 
for black. Um, not clear because there are two pounds, but it's an extra piece. And it is very, it is very good news for me that the rook can't be trapped because I would just take and then take on a one. And that would just simplify the position and make my life easier. So there my opponent tried to take advantage of my slightly weakened king on f8 and played rook 81. I collected even more material. Bishop b3, so white wants to uh, bother me with rook d8 check and uh, create some problems, but I just played rook e2 in order to, co in order to cover the check with rook e8 which I did in the game. Rook d6, um, I mean, any trade would be good for black. So white has to try to keep a little bit of pressure. Obviously, white is completely lost. He's a piece down for just one pawn. But I still need to develop my queen side. This is the last chance for white to save the game, uh, to try to create some practical problems. But OK, there are no serious practical problems. I played b5, so I'm trying to complete my development. And also I want to play a5, a4. And actually I want not only I want addition additionally to the extra piece, I want to take the initiative. Because if I, if I can get the bishop, if I can get if I can get the bishop uh, away from this diagonal and play bishop e6, then um, I'm going to I mean, I'm going to try to promote a queen on the on the queen side. So bishop d5 was played. There I've been thinking for some time and decided to go for rook b8. Of course, rook a7 was the alternative. But I thought rook b8 was better. Uh, one of the strats would be to just, I mean, if necessary, uh, I can play rook b6 next. And if rook takes, then bishop d4 and force a rook trade which would not be a good news for white. My opponent played rook c1, and I did play rook b6. I mean, white's only chance here is to play rook c7, rook g6, and uh, manage something concrete. But after rook b6, he has a concrete problem that I'm trading one pair of rocks. This is not really a move because even more pieces are going to be traded. So my opponent took, I checked him, then I took. Rook c6 was played. I went to d4, just controlling uh, this the f6 square on the diagonal. Yeah, it is soon try to resign. h4, so my opponent is trying his luck with his h pawn. And now I played rook d8. Now that my pawn is on a5, because the bishop cannot stay on this diagonal anymore. After bishop b3, I played a4, and it is quite terrible for white that the bishop has to go away, as now I can just play king e7, and now, and bishop b6 is next. Um, the h pawn is never going to be a threat because I'm controlling h8 twice. Uh, bishop b6 is going to straighten. Bishop takes a2, but also bishop c4 check. This is just a disaster for white. h6 was played, bishop b6, h7. And after check and check, my opponent resigned because after king f2, I'm simply going to check and take the bishop as my bishop is controlling h8, and that will be two extra pieces. So, yeah, that was. Uh, that was not a good game from my opponent, definitely. Um, but yeah, he got tempted with bishop takes h5, and after that, after king after after king f8, the position was simply bad already. Um, I, th I think I think my opponent definitely missed uh, that move, king f8. Otherwise, he would never take on h5. So as we still have. Half an hour left, I'm going to show another game. Um, so 
So I was playing against Razantsev with the black pieces. That, that was a quite important game. Uh, it was French League. Um, it was not a very important game for, for the team as uh, it did not change very much in the, in the rankings. Um, but it was, quite, it was a quite important game for me because that was the last game before uh, the Federation decides on the French national team. And I, I mean the Troy. I mean it was very. I mean it was very shaky. Who would be the fifth player at the time? Would it be me or would it be another player who had a similar rating? So that game was quite important because uh, I knew that if I would do well in that game, uh, then that would then I would probably probably be picked in the team because. Uh, the other player who was a contender for the French national team, um, I didn't play it very well in the French in the French champion, team championship where this game was played. Um, so I was already quite convinced I would be in the team, but I thought, okay, if I that if I can play this game well, which was the last round, um, then that would basically ensure my my place in the French national team. So that was a very important game for me. And I prepared in a, in a funny way that, well, I was playing Grunfeld at the time. And my opponent was uh, most of the time playing this Bishop D2 line. And I was preparing with a very bad laptop. So I had, a, I had an engine, but not very powerful. And the way I prepared was, I mean, I was looking at this position, which is uh, the main line uh, of the bishop d2 variation. And the way I prepared is that I saw that the engine wanted queen d6, which is probably nowadays not what a very strong engine would recommend, but this is what my laptop wanted. So I just, I just had a look just to see just to see if it can be good or not. It, I, I think it's, I think it hasn't been played very often. Uh, we can have a look, but well, actually, it's the second most played move after e6. Okay, I played queen d6. My opponent played f4, and here I played a move that that was not that is not seen very often. I mean, it's clear that here white wants to play e5, and. Uh, this is why, as you could see, most of the games after f4 went e5 or e6. But my laptop was suggesting knight d7. And I said, okay, let's have a look. Let's 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 see. This is, for sure this is going to surprise my opponent because uh, at the time nobody, I think it was even a novelty at the time. And I thought, okay, this is going to surprise my opponent. Maybe I can anticipate his moves. And I, and I was and the way I prepared was what would I play if I were white in this position? Definitely e5, I would do queen c7. Here's something extremely important is that white cannot consolidate his center with c4 because of knight takes c5, and then queen takes and queen takes a1. This is very important because my then my next move is going to be c4. If white had time to play c4 as well, then I would be completely crushed in the center and I would have no counterplay. So this is the first important thing in the position. So my preparation was, what would I play if I were white? Of course, I was helping myself uh, when preparing. I was helping myself with, with the engine. But as I said, the engine was not very strong. But I thought, okay, knight f3. I, I thought, okay, knight f3 here is definitely a possibility. But I thought, with all the of all the black piece, I mean, with the center uh, completely controlled by white, and uh, all my pieces uh, on standing on the queen side, I thought that h4 is a move that I would play if I were white. I thought h4, h5 looks very strong. Then takes f5, queen h6. Uh, the attack is coming very quickly. And knight d7, queen c7 looks pretty ridiculous. 
And h5 here is not a very good move. I think white would just play g4 and then h5. And that looks like a disaster for black. So I, I, I tried h4 and I tried to understand what the engine wanted. And the engine just calmly wanted to play c4. h5 is the logical follow up. Then just knight to b6, and black wants to play rook d8 and take the d5 pawn. Assault knight f3 is a natural move. White should bring more pieces into the attack. I'm not too afraid of this, as I can just uh, recapture with the f pawn. That's going to activate my f f8 rook and. Uh, I mean, next could be bishop f5 and perhaps rook a d8. It will be very difficult for white to uh, continue the attack. I agree with your comments that white looks crushing, but here is not better, actually. The Indian was right. I was preparing. I saw knight f3 is a move that uh, most people would play. Now rook d8 is not so good anymore. Uh, I think probably because of something like f5. And then queen h6 and knight g5, and the attack was, is coming very quickly. Um, we, we, can, we, can put, we can put an engine just to double check. But yeah, so, so he wants to take first. Yeah, is there, yeah. Yeah, even that, you see, the engine is not 100% uh, convinced. Uh, but okay, stuff like this. I need to play e6, allow d6, queen g7. I mean, even this is maybe playable, but well, it doesn't look. I mean, if I can trade queens, I mean, on the long term, this could be weaknesses as well. So I don't, well, I. Doesn't change, you're asking in the chat, well, why not Stockfish? Uh, when I use uh, cl cloud engines online, I use Stockfish, but uh, on a laptop, it doesn't change very much. I mean, any any any, any engine will uh, propose similar moves. I mean, this is anyway not very powerful. I did. Well, I normally use uh, ducats, but okay. Here, uh, the goal is not to have a computer to uh, have a computer session. We're trying to think like uh, humans, so uh, we're not going to use a cloud engine, and uh, we would not do even for free. Uh, we are trying to uh, just think like uh, humans. Uh, we don't. We don't. It. Uh, I mean, we don't uh, really care uh, what a very strong engine would uh, say would say here. I mean, you 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 are very welcome to double check it after after the after the class, of course. But uh, now we want to think with our brains, so I just switched on the engine very quickly, uh, just to try to remember why uh, the engine wanted Bishop G four and not Rook D eight, but uh generally i do not want to uh use uh engines during my master classes anyway bishop g4 is pretty natural uh before white has time to play f5 queen h6 knight g5 i want to eliminate knight on f3 and again i thought here if i were white i would take and play knight g5 that looks extremely natural i mean just uh, preventing, just not trading the knight, attacking h7, and the attack looks quite crashing. But the engine just plays rook d8. He wants to take on d5. d6, only move. After any other move, for example, after this move, um, perhaps something like this. Queen is three, rock, def rock f5, and I, I'm threatening to take here. And this is actually going, this is actually very wrong for white. 
Uh, Rock Age 7 would probably be even worse. Um, I don't know if I, I think Knight takes d5 or Rock takes d5. Both moves would be good because White cannot defend this pawn. And if this pawn falls, then this pawn is likely to fall as well. Um, so the engine just plays Rock AD8. And here D6 looks pretty much like the only move for White. But it is very tempting. It is six, rock h7, attacking the black queen. Queen c5. All the moves played by white and black till now are the moves suggested by the engine, at least by the engine I had on my laptop. So the position is unclear, but the difference was that I knew exactly what was happening. I knew the evaluation of the position and I had an extra hour on the clock because I had prepared everything. My opponent played rook h6, which is actually the computer move. I think knight e4, as was suggesting in, suggested in the chat, is just bad. Uh, queen d5, simply. And if I can trade queens, then f4 will be hanging. Rook takes f4, d takes e5. This just does not work for white, I think. I think rook takes f4 next. So rook h6 looks very logical. And I took an e5. Um, I think king g7 was not too great. Um, I can't remember why. I mean, there is a repetition, but anyway, there is a repetition later on as well, but difficult to find. Uh, it could be that King G7 is already a draw, but at this moment, I already knew that my opponent had to find only moves to make a draw. So I've decided, I decided to just follow my preparation and I took only five. White took on g6. And here, how should white play in order to save the game? Can you find can you find the draw for white? Because actually here it is white with just uh, who is under a big threat. Queen c2 is is isn't good because I play queen e3 check. And I can, at the very least, trade everything on e2 and then take on f4. Not g3 because I'm attacking the, the queen on d2. So, yeah, actually, there are two possible move orders. My opponent played knight f7, which is still fine. Of course, I can't take the knight because of queen takes d8 with check. King h7. And now, what should white play? My opponent in the game played check, and after king g7, I was completely winning. And indeed, the only way to save the game was to play f5. Threatening queen h6 mate, so I have to take the queen. The knight comes back, and white has a lucky escape. White has a perpetual check. And this is the best white can get out of this position. I mean, this is not really a serious move. I mean, I can just play rook d1, just take the queen. For example, if the queen goes somewhere else, then queen is three check. First of all, I already have a draw with queen g1, queen is three if I want to. But here I have plenty of winning moves, I think. Um, well, I, not that plenty because rook h6 is a threat. Um, so what would be the strongest here? I think there are many moves, even, even bishop f5, for example, and check here and just uh, everything is hanging in the, white pro in the white position and actually the white king is weaker than the black king. So, so yeah, f5 was... Uh, the last chance for white to save the game and of course at this moment i was dreaming that my opponent would not play it because 
I was still in my preparation and my opponent had like one minute on his clock. Uh, I saw, well, if he doesn't find F5, then the game is just over. And I knew, I also knew that F5 was the only move in the position because although it could be that we haven't played all the best moves from the beginning, um, in my preparation, I had managed to anticipate uh, my opponent's moves uh, simply because I saw, I think these are the moves that I would play if I were white, H4, H5, and so on. And... Uh, I mean, trying to trying to find the human the human moves, uh, plus the help of a random engine, I could uh, I could somehow just uh, beat. Uh, I think that was my first victory against the player rated over uh, twenty seven hundred. I, I won the game basically without playing, just uh, just with a good preparation, just just guessing. Uh, just guessing what would be the wide moves because my opponent did not find a five. Uh, I mean, I mean, a five is not something obvious. Of course, if you know that there is something to find here, uh, if you do find a five, I mean, a player like Razantsev, who is a very good player, um, if you tell, if you give this position to him as an exercise and tell him why to play and make a draw, he's gonna find a five in a few seconds. But over the board, uh, there is no one to tell you that uh, you're still in time to save the game. So I think probably at this moment, he thought it is already too late. The point being that after Rogue takes Knight takes the eight, I can just take back. And this is impossible because of Queen E3 followed by Queen takes E2. And if the Queen goes somewhere, then Queen E3 is coming. The Rogue on G6 is hanging. This is just a total disaster for, for white. So here, rook h6 was played, king g7. But then now that the knight is on f7, there is no draw anymore. Knight takes d8, i took on d8. And here, my opponent played rook h4. He does not really have a move here if he just goes if he moves his queen somewhere like a queen c1 or queen f2 then i would just trade queens on f2 and take the rook on h6 i mean this is an extra piece uh and the attack is rising on my side so white position is hopeless here rook h4 so my opponent tried to sack his queen to get a bishop and a rook for it um, materially speaking, the position is still equal. Um, that's two rooks and a bishop for knight, queen, and four pawns each. Um, but of course, uh, here the white king is very unsafe. I gave a check and played knight d5. I'm basically threatening to take everything. Queen is three check, and then depending where the white king decides to go, I will take on c3 either with the knight or the queen. My opponent played rook h1. I played queen is three check, took on c3, went back to e3, and now just took on f4. My opponent gave a few, well, it can give a few checks, but okay. I'm just going to bring my king to f5 or to d5. Uh, I mean, the checks are not going to last for very long. My opponent took, and after a few checks, he took, I played c3. And OK, obviously, my pawn is going to uh, promote, and there is no chance for, for white to save the game. So what's mostly interesting in this game is the preparation aspect um this might be something that uh is more i mean this is something that is more difficult to do now than it was at the time of the game i think 2000 yeah 2012 so that was 10 years ago so there was no there were no cloud engines like now or perhaps there were they were but they were not that popular and it's now of course everybody is using them 
Uh, so it could be that the line that I played in that game is refuted. I don't know because I'm not playing the Grunfeld any longer at the time, uh, uh, at the moment, but uh, it could be that uh, the line was uh, objectively wrong. Uh, but okay, that was one of my best uh, preparations, uh, I think, in my in my in my whole life, simply because. Uh, I think I did things uh, right by um, guessing what a human would do uh, after 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 what looked like extremely passive moves. Queen c7, knight e7, queen c7. Uh, yes, that's correct, as you're saying. <laughs> the first time I beat a 2700 was two years before I reached 2700 myself. Unfortunately, I didn't keep 2700 for very long, but uh, anyway, uh, well, you know, uh, the fact I guessed uh, my opponent's move and could win the game because it's basically like I was playing the game with a computer, you know, because um, I, I did not play a move myself in that game except the last ones uh, after my opponent blundered. Uh, I just repeated, I just played my preparation and then uh, when I had to play by myself, I was already completely winning. So that does not mean that uh, I, I am stronger, that I was stronger than my opponent. I simply out prepared him in that game, which can happen. I mean, it also happens the other way around that some players rated uh, with a lower rating than mine uh, over prepare me that I mean that happens uh, uh, this uh, this is uh, I mean <laughs> this happens to everyone um, and uh, well in, the, in that game the thing is that there were not like uh, thousands of options for white. And once my opponent played h4, I was pretty convinced that uh, he would just uh, play what I had prepared until the end, because then all the moves, h5, knight f3, knight g5, and so on, um, these are just, I mean, if you play h4 and then don't continue the attack, then it does not make any sense for white. And uh, I, I was myself surprised. I, I remember pr when preparing for the game, I saw knight e7, queen c7, what is this? This looks so ugly. But then when analyzing it, uh, I found out that it was very interesting with rook d8 coming, problems on the d5 pawn, and in the end, white uh, is the one to have problems with his king that remained in the center. So anyway, a little bit of luck, of course, that... Uh, my opponent just played exactly what I prepared before the game. Uh, but sometimes that's, uh, well, sometimes that's the best way to prepare, to try to, I mean, to stop to stop focusing on, on the engine. Um, how many times, I mean, this is so, this is something so usual that uh, people uh, get better positions because they prepare with cloud engines of, of very strong engines. And the first chance that the opponent makes, they don't know how to react. This is something so typical uh, that sometimes it is just better to think with your brain and to have a weaker computer and to just try to guess what your, uh, what your, what your opponent can do. Um, so... Well, play more careful with white, you know, um, as, as you're saying in the chat, of course you can play more careful with white. Of course, if a player like Razantsev, uh had decided to play careful with white against me, I would. it is very unlikely that I would beat him uh, because it's becoming more and more difficult to win games, uh, especially with black. But uh, here, this is somehow what the position is calling for, you know, e5, eight, I mean, if you play f4 and your opponent allows e5 and you don't play it, then, okay, why do you play f4? I mean, 
why just play it according to the position, but it was somehow working for black. So is there any question about one of the two games? How long you should prepare for every game? Well, that depends. I mean, the best is to work uh, at home and then to save your energy for the games so that you just have to repeat files. Uh, depends on everyone. I mean, the I mean, I know some, I know players who don't like to prepare too much during tournaments, just like me. Uh, I, I like to save my energy for the game. I think it's better to do the work at home and then only quickly, briefly recheck your fights uh, during tournaments. But I also know many good players who don't manage to go to play if the I mean, we, we spend hours and hours every day preparing uh, just because they want to make sure that they remember everything when they arrive at the board and they need to be confident and uh, work a lot during tournaments. Uh, of course, top players can afford uh, to have seconds, to have trainers during tournaments. Uh, but of course, this is very costly. So this is something that only top players can afford. Um, but there is a reason why these uh, top players uh, do not work too much themselves when they play world championship matches and uh, pay for, rather pay for people to work uh, instead of them uh, simply because they want to save their energy for the game so uh, how much you should prepare I mean it depends how much you know about your opponents. Uh, I mean, if, if, if you did a good work at home, then you don't need to prepare too much during the tournament. But if you did not do your homework well enough uh, and you don't know and you don't know and you don't have a clue about the line your opponent is playing, then uh, obviously you need to work a little bit a little bit more during the tournament. Okay, apparently not. So Thank you everyone for following. Um, I hope you enjoyed the game, even if uh, there were only my games. <laughs> um, thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for asking questions in the chat. Thanks for answering questions. Uh, I had a nice time. I hope you as well, guys, and see you. I don't know when, but see you perhaps in a few weeks.